Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to cover the Widowmaker. So this will be part three of the Understanding 12 Leads series. Three in the series because there are three main coronary arteries that we really have to cover if we're going to talk about STEMI. Let's jump right into it. So what people commonly call the Widowmaker... They're referring to the vessel, which is the left anterior descending, which often presents with what a lot of people like to call the anterior MI. We're going to go over why that's a little bit of a misnomer here in a minute. But before we do, let's talk about things that you will see and, of course, the criteria. So generally speaking, leads V2 through V4 where we see this. Sometimes you'll see V5 and V6 have involvement because there can be some spread out to the lateral. Uh, when ST segment elevation is present in V1 uh, through V2, usually the septal wall is involved, which presents its own set of problems. If the septum is not functioning correctly, contraction is just not happening, which, of course, with any major STEMI, as the ischemia and in the injury increases, it's, it's not going to have the kind of contraction that we want. So generally speaking, we can see a decrease in blood pressure and an increase in heart rate. Some abnormalities of the conduction system may be present, I don't really want to go into the full physiology of that. I want to try to keep this video below a, a <clears throat> below a certain time length here. So uh, you can anticipate high degree heart blocks and things like that as the heart becomes more ischemic. Although the conduction system is not directly involved, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. It's probably the best way to say it. One last note about this is uh, we commonly see these on patients that have heart disease. And, and many of those patients may be on blood pressure medications already. So anytime you see patients that are on significant amounts of beta blockers or powerful beta blockers, you don't necessarily need to wait for the super high heart rates to consider it tachycardia or at least as risky as tachycardia. If you've got a patient whose normal heart rate is, you know, in the 50s or the 60s because they're on massive amounts of beta blockers, that's something you're going to need to consider. Okay. It, it just means it's clinically significant. All right. So let's go straight to the criteria. So let's have a look at uh, leads V2, V3, V4. As you can see here, there's a massive amount of ST segment elevation. Now, this is going to be a patient that is probably not going to be very stable, but let's move over to leads 1 and AVL. And some of you may have already noticed the ST segment elevation over there. And of course, reciprocal depression in 2, 3, and AVF. This is one of the reasons I don't necessarily like it when people start talking about um, isolating these and saying, oh, this is an anterior MI, this is a such and such MI. If you look at the vasculature, and we've covered this a couple of times, if you follow my cursor, remember there are two main ostea coming off of the aorta, and one of those, the one that moves out to the left, splits in two and becomes two separate vessels. So where you see involvement of one, you often see involvement of the other. So if we go back to that EKG, it makes more sense if you understand that anatomy, that yes, we, we do see lateral involvement significant lateral involvement in fact with this kind of thing going on so let's go to another EKG and have a look so this is one I've actually used previously because it hits that criteria as well I've used it previously in this series the massive elevation you see is in v2 or excuse me v1 through v4 so this is this is a huge amount of ST segment elevation it's definitely the star of the show but again if you'll go over to leads 1 and ABL and then check leads 2 3 and ABF it'll be blatantly obvious that there is some lateral involvement here. Both of these vessels, or at least the, the place that both of these vessels perfuse, is actively involved. So this is a large area of infarct, and there's going to be quite a bit that the cardiologist is going to have to do. So let's go back to the geography and just have a look at this again. Here's the vasculature. This is the left main coronary artery, which is going to split into the left anterior descending and the left circumflex. Judging by the look of that EKG, it may be safe to say that there's more ischemia in this area, more injury in this area. But again, calling this EKG either a lateral MI or calling it an anterior MI or an anteroceptal MI, it's fine. Okay. All right. So moving forward, let's have a look at another one. This is a little more um, conventional, maybe something a little closer to what you might see on an EKG. So you see leads V1, V2, and V3. Significant ST segment elevation. These are the ones that are a little harder for some people to pick out because they don't they don't hit that traditional ST segment elevation we like to see in the textbooks because of the progression through the precordial leads, right? So leads very often will start negative and end positive going through the precordial leads because they're placed directly over the heart. But again, it does hit ST segment elevation. It does rise above baseline, so it absolutely is an anteroceptal MI. 
going back to the geography, just so you guys can take a look of the actual area of infarct here. You can pause the video or go over it as much as you want. This is what's commonly called the Widowmaker. And one of the reasons is when you see this, you're going to see a huge amount of, let's go back to this one. You see a huge amount of ischemia over a very large area of the heart. So it's not necessarily that every time you see this, the patient is going to die. It's just because there's such a large area of infarct, you know, it's proportionately larger to your traditional, say, inferior MI. You can see worse patient outcomes, especially if you don't have very aggressive therapy. Now, I'm, I'm thankful to say that with the aggressive therapy and the treatment modalities and things that we have today, um, it, it's not the coffin sealer that it used to be. Nitrate therapy and then people who have advanced training in cardiology, especially pre-hospital cardiology, these these things help a great deal. Hitting that door to balloon time of 90 minutes, it helps a great deal in these patients' survivability and cutting down on morbidities as well as mortalities. So if you got questions, put them in the comments. <clears throat> Please do like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry I'm coughing a little bit today. I've got a little bit of a bug. No, it's not cooties, the thing that shall not be named. And if you guys need anything, if you're interested in live lectures or anything of that nature, you can always contact me at shadetreecardiology at gmail.com. Get out there and practice.